Hello, and welcome to the Palm Print Living Room Conversation Series. I'm your host, Kelly Cho Kerry. A year ago, Chino Achebe left us. He left us with a body of work that tells us who we are and how we live as a people. See, Chino Achebe is my hero. And I don't mean in the Arnold Schwarzenegger type of way, but better. He was the first to tell me how my people lived before colonialism, when things fell apart. He told me that my people had a democratic system of self-rule. Just imagine it, a system where the elders get together, propose ideas, debate those ideas, and the best ideas then become the law of the land. Achebe was a massive storyteller. He was also a social and political critic. And in this series, in this conversation, I just want us to pay a little tribute to his works. The things about his works, the things from his works that resonate most with me. And I'm sure also resonates with you. See, Achebe, Achebe means to me the same thing that Chaucer and Shakespeare and Hemingway and all of those great writers mean to Western culture, right? So he was to me the, the custodian of, let's say Nigerian culture or Igbo culture, however you want to carve it out or African culture, however you, you choose to carve it out. That's what he meant to me. He was the custodian of it. He, he looked at it and he said, Here's how we are. Here is how our people lived. Here is how our people functioned before and after colonialism. Right? And he cares so much about also what the the government, the, the, the ineptitude of the government, that he wanted to shine a light on all the all of those uh, shenanigans. Right? So all the things that troubled him. In fact he he said that since he was living so, since he'd been living so long in, in, in the U.S., some people would ask him, why do you continue to write books with African, uh, African characters? And his answer was that, look, America has so many people telling this story. Africa doesn't have enough. Nigeria doesn't have enough. So it's my duty. He made it his duty. He saw it as his duty to tell the story of Nigeria. So, and, and that was one of the things I, I really admired about him. That a man, a writer that just saw this as, this is a talent that I was given and I'm gonna use this talent in this way to tell the story of my people. I don't think that will be known until maybe, maybe later on. Right? So he just died last year. And his work is going to be celebrated for years to come. And I think it will be years to come, let's say 10, 20, 30 years from now, 50 years from now. And you look back and you start to have scholars study his work and the impact of his work and how his criticism influenced behavior. My people! Say Nanga again. This is the boy who thrust his fig into my eye. He came to my house in Bari, ate my food, drank my water and my wine. And instead of saying thank you, instead of saying thank you to me, he said about plotting how to drive me out and take over my house. Dear Odili, I have noted carefully all what you said about my marriage. Really, you should pity poor me, Odili. I am in a jam about the whole thing. If I develop cold feet now, my father will almost kill me. Where is he going to find all the money the man has paid on my head? So it is not so much that I want to be called a minister's wife, but a matter of I can't help. What cannot be avoided must be born. What I pray for is happiness. If God says that I will be happy in any man's house, I will be happy. In this book, this is where well, first of all, this is the book that almost got Achebe killed. 
because it was published two days before the first coup in Nigeria in 1966. And in the book, he dramatized the coup. And this is the book where he, he laid out for us the whole system of corruption and how not only are the people in government sort of doing these things and using, misappropriating the, the people's money and using the, the people's money for personal gains, right? But he shows us that their people, their constituents actually condone it, right? Because they will say, well, if it was you, if it was you in office and you had access to that money, wouldn't you do the same thing? So this is the book where he he really shows us what corruption and how it functions and how it sort of seeps into the culture and how it's part of the culture. And in order to root out corruption in government, the the mindset of the people also, it also has to be rooted out from the constituents. To me, Things Fall Apart is a historical text. Right? It's history dramatized. That that simple, plain and simple is what this fall apart is. The reason why Achebe wrote this book is that he wanted our people, he wanted to remind our people how life was and how our people lived, who we are, before colonialism came. Now this book was published in 1958. And at the time, he was 28 years old. He was working as, as a broadcaster. And he wanted to write this book to remind our people of who we are. So, and that's the way I read Things Fall Apart. And the title just says it all. That our system of self-rule, our culture, all of that just fell apart when the missionaries came, followed by the colonial government. Because the stories that he tells are not just a Nigerian story. It's a, they're, they're human stories, right? In one of his books, he, he talks about, I think it's in the, the book, A British Protected Child, the, the Education of a British Protected Child. He talks about how when This Fall Apart was published and he started getting letters and he got one letter from an Asian country. I don't remember the, the, the country now. And the letter was from a class, an elementary, elementary school class. It was a literature class where they had read his book and they wrote him a letter saying that, wow, you just told our story. Now, he's in Nigeria, right? The missionaries first came to Nigeria around 1854. So the story takes place right before that happens and sort of like, you know, at the intersection of, of that happening, right? So he tells that story of these people living in that time. And then these people in Asia write him a letter saying, you told our story. So I think that his books are celebrated because the stories that he tells are fundamental human stories. So this is what Achebe was doing, right? His medium or his weapon was his pen to say, I don't like this aspect of who we are. I don't like this aspect of the way we're living. And he just made it plain. And that's the same thing that any of us who has that platform, whether you're a singer, or you're, you're an actor, you're a, you're a screenwriter, you're a novelist, or you're a short story writer, or you're a poet, right? The, the, you know, if, if, if an artist has done their job right, they've examined our culture, and they, they're saying things about our culture, both good things, the things that need to be improved or the things that just move us forward. The things about ourselves that we don't know. 
that to me is 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 the you know is the is the worth of of art. That that to me is what art is supposed to do.